changes to the agenda. should be at 75% of their expenditure budget used. Departments over budget as of September 30th are Clerk of Superior Court at 77%, Sheriff's Office at 77%, and EMA at 81%. Overall, we are at 72% of the total revenue budget received and 67% of the total expenditure budget used. Total revenue received to date, $20,003,632. Total expenditures to date, $18,583,915. Okay. Any questions? Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. In um, discussion of the possible action of the American Rescue Plan Act, um, <clears throat> I wanted to ask, uh, we have Gary McVeigh and Mike Gibbs here from the Water Authority. Uh, would y'all kind of summarize for us what the proposal is that we discussed the other day? Good evening. Um, what we're proposing is to uh, run a new water line. Uh, you got to remember the CDBG that we're working on that we just completed. Uh, where that ended on Round Top Road, we're looking about running a new water line uh, from that point all the way down Round Top Road to the Gilmer Pickens County line. And, uh, you know, give the citizens in that area an opportunity to get on public water. Uh, I was telling Charity Paris during our meeting the other day that probably uh, nine out of ten calls I get requested public water is in that area because of the uh, quality of the wells in that area. I think they're high in iron and manganese, that kind of thing. Um, and what we talked about doing, if we could do this, is treat it like it was the CDBG project where the the monies would actually pay for the meter water meters to be set for those citizens in that area and even uh, tie it between the meter and the house as well. Just treat it just like it was the CDBG project. Uh, and you're looking at about five and a half miles of, of pipeline in order to complete the project. Uh, this project also would uh, provide uh, fire protection in the area uh, all the way to the county line. And cost on that would be roughly $1 million? Right at $1 million, right. yes. Okay. Right. Any, any questions on that? I think it's a great idea. Okay. I believe you said the impact fee would be reduced also. Well, that, that's a board decision, but the board, uh, in speaking board to the board. chairman, the board would uh, would make a, uh, a special, kind of like they've done in the past, and reduce the impact fee 
right. you know, to where it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be on the sixth. Now, this would come from the second uh, payment uh, that we, we would be getting. Which we had for the first of the year. We had for the first of the year. But they could go ahead and do the plan. They can, yeah, go ahead and do that. And what I would suggest would be that uh, uh, we go ahead uh, by resolution and approve this to uh, actually reserve that money uh, ahead of time. You made that in the form of a motion? That's in the form of a motion. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion possible action of group, group health insurance rates. The, the tough thing on this one for me is we have basically two proposals. One that would uh, give us the same benefits that we have right now. Uh, and the other one would give us the same benefits with the exception that rather than Delta Dental, uh, the dental coverage would then be uh, folded in with Anthem along with uh, all of our other coverage. That will that particular plan would save us, I believe, it's one hundred and seven thousand dollars, and that's hard to that's hard to ignore. On the other hand, as near as we can tell. <coughs> Almost none of the dentists in LJ, except Anthem. So, uh, unless you happen to be associated with the one that does, uh, you'd have to change your dentist, and perhaps even uh, if if there's not taking uh, new patients on the other one, might even have to go outside of uh, Gilmer County to find a dentist. <clears throat> To me, that's kind of serious and it's a very undesirable thing. On the other hand, there's $107,000. So I gotta tell you, this, this is a tough one for me. Um, in the end, I favor staying with Delta Dental, but I believe that the only actual reasonable choice for the people of Gilmer County would be to fold it in with Anthem and save the hundred and seven thousand. So I'll throw that out for discussion. The employees are terribly important to the county. Mm -hmm. We haven't been able to pay them well. Hopefully we can improve that. Uh, I hate to cause them a problem. I'm a fiscal conservative, 107,000 is a lot of money, but I'm a little concerned about what it does to our employee population. I agree. Well, I, let me tell you, I would be a very easy easily convinced <laughs> to go with the delta dental so which is the plan we have now yes sir so are you ready for a motion to stay with the plan we have now i am i just made it okay i'll second it is there any further discussion no i'm happy to stay there because that also keeps our dentists well, yeah, they, they would keep my dentist. That doesn't but, work. Yeah. I mean, having work, and I hate for our employees to have to travel so far yeah. when they're trying to miss as little work as possible going to a dentist. So, right. Go over all. Right. I'm happy to stay. Okay. All right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, discussion, possible action of extended county maintenance on Alpha Road to the Corps of Engineers property. Um, after looking at all the yeas and nays on that and the situation that we have, I am going to
to make a motion that we uh, we extend <coughs> county maintenance to the Corps of Engineers property and not beyond. I'm going to second that because I think that's the responsible thing to do um, out there. We've, uh, our director of roads has told us several times, and I think that's the right thing to do as well. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. <clears throat> no. Brings us to our zonings. First one is for Jeff Watkins from A1 Agricultural to R1 Residential Low Density. This is to build short term rentals utilizing the annual splits. <clears throat> I, um, I will go ahead and make a motion on that. And my motion will be that this will be denied. Second. All in favor? Uh, um, okay, Melvin and Kim land from A1 to R1 residential low density. As I recall, I believe this is the one where they're wanting to make a split uh, and give their granddaughter a couple acres. And I would be okay with that. I would make a motion and we'll approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. On items four and five, <clears throat> Karen, I did get an email saying that they would like this to be remanded back. Okay. I always get that one. <coughs> I don't like that one, I guess. I don't know. Um, okay. Franklin and Allison Milford, I'm just anxious to get to remand it something. Uh, from A1 Agricultural to A1 Agricultural with conditional use, this is for a wedding venue. And uh, given the location, uh, I personally would be okay with it. Yes. Well, I haven't made a motion yet. No, sorry. But, uh, I will. I will make a motion that that be approved, uh, contingent on, on all of the conditions set by the planning board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now, four and five. Um, I did get an email saying that uh, they would like to have this remanded back. So. I would make a motion that this be remanded back to the planning board. Which one is that? Uh, that is the, uh, from R1 residential to R4 multifamily medium density, uh, right at, at New Road. Yeah, that's uh, what we're here for. Yeah. Why would it be remanded back? I mean, what's the uh, they, uh They would like to conduct a traffic study uh, or have one conducted before that would be the expense of the developer that wants to do all of this cluster that's correct and they, they realize that the four-way stop is a part of east lj and has to do nothing to do with the traffic study coming up to the four-way stop i i don't know what they realize um but and i don't see a traffic study doesn't include the four-way stop as being a legitimate traffic they study get to it for, I mean, that says you can't even make it to the Four-way stop where this starts at with that housing that they want to do. And I, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, first, we need you to go to the podium, but uh, second, we're, we're starting to get back into a, a, a yeah. public hearing. They, they're going to remand it back for the traffic study, and the planning commission will hold another public hearing in which you'll be able to participate. And once that traffic study is available, if you'll go ahead, Karen, can you raise your hand? If you'll just reach out to her uh, by yeah, telephone, to the okay, she'll be happy to provide you with a copy of it. If you can go ahead and exchange emails, maybe tomorrow, with, you 
know, sometime next week, just let her know, and, and she'll be happy to give you a copy of that before that public hearing, okay? A copy of the traffic study? Yes. And that will be done before the November meeting? Uh, it'll be done before the public hearing. It, 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 may take another, it may take a little bit more time because of the advertisement requirements and things, but you'll be provided with a copy of it because it'll be, a, it'll be a subject to the open meeting, open records. And you can use that and look at that prior to the public hearing and then participate in the public hearing that the planning commission will hold. Okay. Essentially, this is going to start it all over again. Yeah, that's what we're afraid of. We're subject to the stop to its name. But before you do leave, uh, if, I, if you may provide your name to the clerk so she, so she can record it in the minutes. Can you? I can do that. Okay. My name is Doodle Pierce, P E A R C E. The president of Rich Haven Homeowners. Thank you. May I ask one question? Yes, ma'am, would you need sure. to come to the podium? <laughs> My name is Lynn Pennyway, I live on Rich Haven Trail, uh, and I'm on the board of Rich Haven Homeowners Association also. One of the things when we had the Planning Commission hearing, next to Ridge Haven Trail, there was a cliff, a big cliff, a very tall, big cliff. that often falls down. Ma'am, ma'am, again, they can't hear this information. The, 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 the ordinance and the law But provides. didn't they say that they would have an engineering study done as well? That was part of the continuous. And they're going to have that as well as the, uh, Yes, they'll be doing that as well. But the engineering uh, study? Uh, yes. We, okay. we just ask that you save those arguments for that public hearing and that, that uh, meeting. And well, it, I know they only advertised. said traffic study, and I'm more concerned about Cliff falling into my backyard than having to wait too long to stop such and, and that was my fault. I, I was okay. incomplete in what I said. We're covered. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Were there other studies being done that we should know about? <coughs> what was their tradition on that? No short term rentals. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, you got a motion. I'll second Did I make the motion? Yes, you did. Okay. And I'll second that motion. All in favor? Move to remain here. Move to remain here. Okay. For both. Aye. Aye. Okay, and the final one is for Marvin and Gail Patterson, A1 Agricultural to P1 Public Institute to carve out uh, 1.73 acres, I believe it was, for a uh, family cemetery. I would make a motion that that be approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Red, oh, citizens wishing to speak, and I, I almost skipped it, but I did not. Anybody that would like to speak on any topic, um, then just come to the podium. Any topic? Any, well, <laughs> almost any topic. <laughs> now, I'm going to ask, we're not going to start this, this meeting. Um, we probably will at some point. But we uh, we have a lot of enthusiastic folks here lately that can easily speak for 30 and 40 minutes. Um, so, brief. okay, uh, I'm just speaking about plans for the future here now. Uh, very likely at some point we'll put a, like a 10 minute, 15 minute time limit on it. Um, we will put some time limit on it. Uh, but uh, we're not going to do that tonight. We just ask you to be brief, please. Yes. John Allgaier, River Hill Road, national resident. So I worked hard today, and I'm a little bit irritable. It might be because I'm hungry. But I just sat down and watched you give free water hookups to people because they're water filters couldn't filter out the iron in the water. Um, 
I'd like to know where I apply to get a rebate on the water filters that I pay for quarterly to get the iron out of my water at my house. Because you're not only do I have to pay for the iron to be filtered out of the water and all the chemicals out of my well, you're taking some of my tax money and giving it to somebody else and giving them free city water. I can't argue that point in the extreme, but you do realize that this is federal money now and not Gilbert County money. There's no such thing as federal money. And that's why I said I can't argue it's not in the extreme. Money. It's not free. It comes with the tax and, and that's why I said and I can't argue it in the extreme. You report to Big Brother now. Just like the little blindsided action that one of our post commissioners, too, is trying to make by bringing in the University of Georgia to tell us, let's do a study and we'll get apartments and we'll get free government money when we do apartments. A different subject. I didn't come talk about that tonight. Well, every thing. time you go to the government tea, you pay, and you pay dearly. I have a question about the uh, second thing you talked about. Uh, no, that was a different one. So tonight, while I'm sitting back here tired, because I'm an old man and I shouldn't be working, but I am, and you get yourselves a raise. Didn't give us a raise. Every year, my health insurance rates go up. And you just decided that because you didn't want to be inconvenienced to go find a new dentist, you would spend an extra $107,000 of county money. I, believe, I don't appreciate that at all. I believe the issue was whether or not we wanted to uh, allow local dental coverage for the county employees as opposed to making them have to leave the county to get dental. I respect you so very much. You're a great politician. I said what I said. The, 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 the question that I did have was that because uh, I try to I, I try to follow the patterns of the voting, and sometimes it confuses me. Uh, but you approved the uh, uh, looked like it might have been action number three. You approved something, but it was conditional, and so you just say conditional. So these con conditions, they're in writing coming through the board of uh, the planning board and so when you say a or yay or nay it, it's it's in writing i mean we don't we don't hear the conditions sitting down here but it's already been discussed and so when you're given the stamp of approval all these conditions are in writing and the, the developer or whoever the the owner homeowner has to abide by conditions a b c d mm -hmm. okay I was, I was concerned because it's, it's not in writing here, but, but you have it writing in your system. It will, be in, uh, it will be in writing in the referendum that our county attorney will, will uh, create. Uh, when we approve or, or deny something here, then we get a referendum for everybody to sign on that, and it has all of the stipulations. That, resolution. resolution, I'm sorry. It has all of the uh, stipulations in there that we have. Uh, and so when we get that, it will specify in writing those three conditions. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. I think we do need to clarify the insurance cost of the county is going up as everyone's cost is going up, even with the situation we have. Right. <clears throat> yes, Chair. Commissioners, staff, constituents. Um, my name is Tom Wapley. I live at 76 Burnaby Trail. I'm proud to say that. So I'm going to give my address out. Um, without discussing something, Council, uh, Council through the Chair, if, it, if it's remanded back to planning and zoning, um, the Yukon items four and five, does that not start the process all over again? There will be a new advertisement, there will be a new public hearing, and there will be a new opportunity for the planning commission to consider whether to approve or to deny the application, and right. then that will float back up to the board of commissioners. So, council, could I make a argument then, since it started all over again and notice is going to be out, that they would not be prohibited from hearing anything regarding that because 
they can't take action on something that's being remanded down. It's being remanded down, and if you wish to talk about it, it's going to potentially open this board up to a lawsuit. So if you wanted to cost the taxpayers that, then Tom, by all means, go ahead and proceed. I'm, I'm trying to figure out if, if I would hope that you wouldn't, though. Wouldn't what, sir? Cost the taxpayers that potential risk. No, sir. But, uh, sir, I, I have to tell you, since we're, we're in dialogue through the chair, um, you know, yesterday, I, I think there should be a procedure that if there's an objection to a public speaker, if we're going to be strict on the rules on how the public speaks, we should probably be strict on the rules on how it's done with your parliamentarian. I think if there's an objection to a speaker, it should go through a point of order from either or the, the chairman can shut down the speaker or one of the commissioners can do a point of order. You shouldn't be talking about this and maybe discuss it with council, but council shutting down speakers, I think, I, I've been speaking for 30 years. Tom, I didn't, shut you, again. I didn't shut you down. I said if you wish to risk into the step into that arena, you were open to. I just didn't think it would be a wise decision. Mr. Chair, do I have a floor, sir? Yes. Okay. I, I, I appreciate it. He's a great county attorney. He's probably the best in the business. But I think the problem we have is, is that every county in this state has different rules on how they proceed. Now, the Supreme Court has ruled Y'all don't have to let us speak. I think we know that. But I know, you know, the commission, they want to hear everything from everybody. They want to hear it and hear what we have to say. And for the most part, up until about the past month and a half, this governing body has been laissez-faire. They, y'all really are close with the community. And, but I think shutting down public speakers through somebody that's not a commissioner, now, now he, he is your representative, he's your parliamentarian, I get it, and, and he gives you advice, but it should go through the chair. I, I agree, and uh, I will be the one doing that going forward. Yes, sir. I, I, just not, I'm, I'm not taking on any counsel through the chair. I'm not taking on any okay. counsel. Um, I, 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 think, I see your point. I, I think we're getting a little too technical because if it goes back down, and it's not on notice yet, but it's going to be on notice. But the, when, notice, I look at notice when I go to the website, I see the agenda. And, you know, the, the buyer and the seller and their attorney could have been here because it's on the website. I look at that as a conspicuous place, you know, it's on notice. And I don't believe that, though, is recognized as satisfying the requirements of, of uh, advertising. Uh, so that anybody who is for or against knows to be here at this meeting to make their arguments. Yes, sir. And that's, I think that's the problem. Um, <clears throat> I've even thought about, uh, you know, going ahead and making that advertisement so people can say what they want to stay here, but I'm not really sure that, uh, you know, we want to really get that deep in the weeds with it. Yes, um, also, I would bet actual money that you will be at that, uh, planning board meeting mm -hmm. to, uh, to make those comments. But the, the reason I think the board, the county commissioners, board commissioners should hear public arguments again is because sometimes there's one of y'all at the planning and zoning commission, sometimes there's two of y'all, and, and because there's a gap in the dates between the planning and zoning and the board of commissioners, sometimes data changes to where y'all may not be aware that something has occurred out there with that property, but a citizen may know it, but they can't come up and tell you. Let, let me mention, though, that there is one other alternative. Yes, sir. Um, a um, a well-known and popular individual could urge people to write emails to their commissioners. <laughs> and uh, I have a separate folder in my email. I just, I read them and I I have no, idea. You're I, no I, I'm not saying anybody. I'm just saying someone in that position might might do that. Yes, sir. And uh, I, let me tell you, the commissioners get the idea pretty quick that yes, way. Sir. And as far as I know, that's strictly legitimate. Yes, sir. 
Well, I appreciate what everybody on the dais does. You two counsel, thank you. I didn't mean to pick on you just a little bit, but you know, um, you're, you're, you're an attorney, you're used to it. So. Anyway, you got a list there. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to also make it clear that you know that all of us have a recording, that we get the chance to listen to a recording. Well, so all of us have heard the entire meeting. Yes, ma'am. And, and Madam Commissioner, I, I hope you all do listen to it. I, I absolutely do. Listen. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. between one and the other, I really want to let you know you made the right decision. Even if you're trying to go with it, at not the cheaper, it ain't the as your employees, okay, right? Plus, what's going to happen later? Are they going to jack their rates up once they got you hooked? You know, so that's just something else to consider. I would stay with what you got, what you decided, and uh, kudos for that decision. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. then the Catalyst Group, which kind of morphed into several other groups you know, my, in my research. Um, part of that study was done from what was Georgia Re Research um, acronym in the GRC. Um, the same group that's being used, I understand, during this moratorium and set division period that we're observing. Um, part of that um, research done at the time by the that, or, that um, commission involved asking questions or a survey of Gilman County residents. This is titled Gilman County Joint Comprehensive Plan 2020 through 2024, page 90. This is a question asked again of local uh, residents. Gilman County should continue to grow even if it means a loss of agricultural lands. A mere 5.4% agree that should take place. I'm sorry, what was the percentage? 5.4 percent. So yeah. sure, let's grow um, Thank you. regardless of what it costs us in our agricultural lands. Agricultural land should be protected as the community grows. And astounding and not surprising, 83.4 percent share that mindset. When, in question number 10, what do you consider the greatest threat to your community? It wasn't methamphetamine, it wasn't burglary, it was uncontrolled growth to cap that could destroy our small town in St. Peter's. 59.1% of the residents here in Gilmer County shared that view. I'm going to assume, and I don't think I'm going out on a limb here by saying so, that if we did, when this study is done once again and we get repaid for the study once again, that same sentiment is going to come back as being relatively the same percentage of concern of people we have concerned here in Gilmer County. Um, and looking at, looking through the joint comprehensive plan that was created through that same steering committee, some points were taken, some goals, some policy was adopted. Goal number five in the joint comprehensive plan for Gilmer County, LJ, East LJ, City of LJ. Goal number five, policy 7.2, Promote future residential development that is compatible with the physical limitations of the land and the established land use in that area. Why we are having a discussion about Yukon Road ad nauseum? Can we what can we cram in there? Can we widen it? Can we bring water out there? We've done the study. We adopted the policy. We set the goal. Why are we having to come and have these discussions over and over? and over. Going into your economic development land use, LU1. Promote development of our existing unfinished subdivisions prior to the development of new subdivisions. Prior to. Why are we having discussions about townhomes, apartments, new subdivisions, 
on an ongoing basis when our existing study results state that we are supposed to be finishing our unfinished subdivisions prior to development of new subdivisions. The community work program page on page 24 land use says, we want to strengthen subdivision regulations dealing first with final plat implementation and impose a moratorium on new subdivisions until existing subdivisions are built out. That responsible part of your local government and our planning and zoning department. What are we going to do with this new study when it comes back and tells us the exact same thing all over again? Are we going to produce another joint comprehensive plan for 2020 through 2024 um, that says the exact same things and we're going to not abide by them again? And when I say we, I mean you all. Um, we're here fighting every day. I would not come to these meetings and hold you all accountable. That's your job. It's your duty and responsibility as elected officials to abide by the comprehensive plan we paid for, to abide by the rules that are in place, and to listen to the will of the people. Resolution to adopt the 2021 and 22 annual update to the capital improvements element for Gilmer County and the cities of LJ and East LJ. Uh, that has been advertised. Uh, everything is in order. And I would make a motion that we approve the adoption of the annual update. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I would. Um, 
I would like to skip number eight for right now. That's, uh, I don't really have anything to discuss on that until the next meeting. Uh, I did not get a list of the Georgia Power easements yet. We know they're coming, but I still, I still don't have them, so um, I think the, as one of you looked this for the November meeting, uh, maybe we'll have them at that point. Discussion, possible action or appointment of human resource director. I would um, make the motion, make the motion that um, Lauren Jones be appointed as the um, assistant human resources director going forward, and that uh, Kathy Rambo Gray um, would be appointed as the new human resources director. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Um, the budget amendment, I think we really already dealt with. That was the uh, water uh, issue. So. Adoption of the first reader of use of speed detection and device ordinance. I would uh, make a motion that we adopt the first reader. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Discussion, possible action on changing work session, regular meeting dates in November of 2021. <clears throat> I think the uh, 17th and the 18th works for everybody. So it would be the 17th at nine and, and the 18th at nine in this case. And I would so move. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Go into executive session with no action taken. Second, man. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, folks, we appreciate it.